Well, good afternoon. Day two. I'm going to spend about two hours getting this done. Just tried to uh, bolt this up here and see what I could do. This is a pretty wimpy puller, uh, but we've seen how much power it's going to take yesterday, but I just wanted to give it a quick shoot, shout out to see if we could do it this way. Got no movement. Everything's tight as can be. Going to end up stripping and tearing it up. Uh, the puller, if I continue, so I'm just going to dig the seals off of there. Not going to do it on camera, blow the balls and get this stuff pulled off and get ready to take out the two shafts. So that is where I'm at. I'm going to take you guys along, but I'm not going to film. You've seen it all on the last video of me removing these bearings. We're just going to have to do the same. It's going to be good practice for when we get over there on the nice unit. So working on continued disassembly. And moving forward, thank you for watching. Here we go. Progress has been made. Uh, we blew the bearings right off. Uh, didn't damage anything. Some more good practice. Got to keep the heat low. I don't know if you can see it. There's quite a bit of rust under those bearings. I don't think we would have been able to pull it. We got the rear beater ready to come out. Don't know if we'll get to the cylinder today, but we're going to try. And I am keeping track of where these shims are. I'm going to keep them on there, where those shims are. And so we're going to get this out here in just a second. I was able to strategically lick the race in two just to save time. I did not damage the shaft at all. You can see the amount of rust in there. I don't think these were, uh, let me get you to focus here. I don't think these were going to come out with the amount of rust in there. And the one on the cylinder, I just was able to gently lick it in half. And uh, you can just see the rust. So, moving right along, those are the things that took the most time. Timothy's actually in the hopper, taking out the bolts. Eventually, we'll be removing the saddle tank. Raise your hand there, Timothy. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to set this uh, beater down here in just a second. Moving right along today with the uh, rear beater removal. Uh, we have our four housings from the cylinder and I'm going to go over getting out these uh, bearing races here. Outer races. We got our shims. We got our collars that go over the edge right here to keep uh, grass and stuff from wrapping down in here. This is the side that has the big pulley underneath. Still a little warm actually. Uh, underneath the um, on that side underneath the operator's seat and further back engines right under the seat but uh, it has one shim on that side I had to torch this and I did not get into the shaft we torched this or actually we were heating it and it cracked off so we didn't get in the shaft there's four shims over here different thicknesses and so we have us a good shaft everything's good uh, if we were to need to reinstall a beater into that one. So we'll have some parts on the shelf, keep that one going. And now I will get into uh, removing these. Let's see if we get one here that will, uh, here this one, will, this one will move. Uh, it's real simple. Everybody kind of worked on these things maybe will know this. Uh, we just turn it till you get into these indentions right here. And uh, <clears throat> sorry about not getting you in focus there. Uh, Timothy will hold it for me, and I will just uh, 
there you go so right there those indentions obviously if we would reuse this this would be sandblasted and cleaned up but that's how they go in so we're going to remove these throw these in the scrap bin send them to china and keep all these parts so another step closer to the disassembly all right i intend to see if we can loosen those up right there they've been tightened down since when who knows when it was built i'd say it's either late 60s early 70s i don't know i haven't looked at this serial number or had it looked up so i'm going to take those loose see if that will uh, open up get some pb in there and see if we can uh, move the shaft we loosened up the bolts around the hub took the bolts out of there on both sides and loosened the hub used a screwdriver pounded it down in there and we've got as you can see about a half inch of movement we've got to clean this shaft but we're gonna have to quit for today so we're gonna move it one more time and then let it soak here we go We'll conclude what we can do plus we might have the keyway over here yes we have the keyway hitting the domed hub over here right here so what we will have to do is get the hub off here and get it back and get the key out so that we can uh, slide it the rest of the way out I last let off we had this moving back and forth, the shaft moving, but we need to clean it, take these hubs off, slide them back. I don't know if you can see them in there, right in there. Get the keys out, get this all moving, slide the shaft out, then the cylinder, we'll put the forklift under the cylinder, we'll bring the cylinder out whole. That is the plan. You will see now that I have the hubs dismounted from the cylinder and I'm working on sliding those back and forth, get them off the keys, and then the shaft should go clean out the side of the combine. Let's see what we can do here. There we go. That hub moved over really nice. And we'll see if we can get this one to move over just as nice on this side oh yes they slid very nice once the screwdrivers expanded them now we can spin the shaft in there to where we can get the key stock out which is right there so now we'll work on the key stock I'm kind of betting that that is a press fit. It would make sense. You would want that to be a press fit. So we're going to try to lock some vice grips on it and um, see if we can tap it out of there. I don't know how well this will work, but we're going to try it. Anyway, hopefully we don't have to take one of these bars off. I was hoping to leave those on. But I'm afraid it's gonna be right in the way. Nope, oh, not as tough in there as I thought it would be. I don't think that is a press fit. Got it right out. So we'll do the next one the same way. I'm gonna get you guys back I'm going to get some bars put across the bottom to the fan housing up here slide that shaft out I think it's just going to come flying out the side and uh, drop the cylinder onto those bars roll it out the front all right here goes let's see what happens kind of got in a bind I think 
me take these off to the side. Tap the screwdriver in. Give it some more penetrating fluid. Big shot, big can. Runs out of propellant. Got. Uh, Probably that much left in, not much propellant. Just give you a heads up on that. All right, this should be it. And with a boom, we got it. Now I am going to slide the cylinder out. It's not too bad. It's probably 60 pounds. Cylinder completely removed. Shaft over here, undamaged. There's where the bearing was rusted on. You can tell that there would have been tight to pull. So, all looks good. The reason I worked so hard to retrieve this, I don't know that I'll ever need it, but it was very intriguing to me because, I've told you more than once, these split stars. And the unit we have, I'm not going to go ahead and take them out and put it in, but if I need it in the future... These units, this unit does not have that at all. And I've heard my cousins talk about how their dad ran a rock through there and damaged a bunch of these. And they had to cut them out of old parts ones and weld them all back in and get it straight and weld them in. Well, then you're not going to be balanced. So I'm not going to change these, but what I'm after is to have the parts in case I need it. It's the first one in my lifetime working on these that I seen had the split stars. So that's why I did it. Another part down, like, share, and subscribe. I think I'm gonna next investigate getting all of that off up there and seeing what we can do with it and go from there. Like, share, and subscribe, come back for more. It's getting smaller every time we do this. Thank you.